Welcome to week two in our discipleship series here at St. Mary by the Sea. This week our theme is community and fellowship. Over these seven weeks we're looking at how we nurture ourselves in our walk with Jesus so we can have some more tools in our kite so we can be faithful followers of Jesus. So grab your Bible now, we'll be reading from Romans. series we hope that you will experience something of where God has been with you in your journey so far and where you might be being called to in the future. It's both a series for reflection and a series for inspiration, for celebrating and giving thanks for all that we are hearing of God and God's work in our lives. Last week we looked at worship, this week it's community and over the coming weeks we will be looking at breaking bread, sharing our faith, prayer, serving others, and drawing it all together, we'll be looking at celebration. So I look forward to journeying with you over this time. Now, of course, many of these topics are divided into parts, but life isn't quite so neat, is it? They all flow into each other. So we can't deal with them all completely separately, but it, it helps to look at things separately even though acknowledging that it all weaves together. So thanks for joining us. Our guiding scripture is from Acts chapter 2 and it's verses 43 to 47. Everyone was amazed by the many miracles and wonders that the apostles worked. All the Lord's followers often met together and they shared everything they had. They would sell their property and possessions and give the money to whoever needed it. Day after day they met together in the temple. They broke bread together in different homes and shared food happily and freely while praising God. Everyone liked them and each day the Lord added to their group others who were being saved. For me, one of the key themes that jumps out of this reading from Acts is generosity. Generosity underpins everything that happened in the early church. People were generous with their time, with their possessions, with their money, with the way they showed hospitality to each other. This connecting, this sharing, this generosity marked those early followers of Jesus. And the writer of Acts notes this, everyone liked them, and the Lord added to their numbers. I reckon they were a fun bunch of people to be around. And God calls us into community, to fellowship with each other. Today our scripture is from Romans. If you don't have your Bible, can you push pause now and go and grab it? I'd like you to turn with me to Romans chapter 12 and I'm reading verses 9 to 21 and I'm reading from the contemporary English version of the Bible. That's Romans 12, 9 to 21. Be sincere in your love for others. Hate everything that is evil and hold tight to everything that is good. Love each other as brothers and sisters and honour others more than you do yourself. Never give up. Eagerly follow the Holy Spirit and serve the Lord. Let hope make you glad. Be patient in your time of trouble and never stop praying. Take care of God's needy people. Welcome strangers into your home. Ask God to bless everyone who mistreats you. And ask him to bless them and not curse them. When others are happy, be happy with them. And when they are sad, be sad with them. Be friendly with everyone. Don't be, frowd, don't be proud and feel that you are smarter than others. Make friends with ordinary people. Don't mistreat someone who has mistreated you. But try to earn the respect of others. 
and do your best to live at peace with everyone. Dear friends, don't try to get even. Let God take revenge. In the scriptures, the Lord says, I am the one to take revenge and pay them back. The scriptures also say, if your enemies are hungry, give them something to eat. And if they are thirsty, give them something to drink. This will be the same as piling hot burning coals on their heads. Don't let evil defeat you, but defeat evil with love. That was Romans chapter 12, verses 9 to 21. A key aspect of the early church was something called koinonia, and it's a Greek word. That Greek word basically means common. Koinonia, it's what holds everything together. Koinonia, what we hold in common. It meant common fellowship. It meant the common meal. It meant sharing and communion. For the early church, holding things in common was critically important. Eating, praying, sharing. There are three things which we hold in common. Holding things, these things in common builds up a community. And the community in turn builds up individuals to contribute to the common good. And we live in community to varying degrees, based on how much we share. Christian community is a place where we can eat, share and pray. Where we can do life together. Where we can be sure of welcome. And where we can be sure our needs will be met, regardless of who we are. And intentional Christian community is where we intentionally come together to share with one another. And this is vital for discipleship and for the sharing of our faith. That is, in part, why we meet on Sundays. And Paul gives us a vision, or what we might say today, some of the values that our community should hold to. So if we wish to have a community that holds to the common good, that has this quinonia, that worships together, then we need some common values. Paul said this, Be sincere in your love for others, hate everything that is evil, and hold tight to everything that is good. Love each other as brothers and sisters, and honour others more than you do yourself. Never give up. Eagerly follow the Holy Spirit and serve the Lord. Paul reminds us that it's not all about myself. Rather, it's about us. It's about what we can do, not, what about, not about what I can get out of this, or whether my needs are met. Community, koinonia, is about whether I contribute to the whole. Our starting point is others' needs rather than my own. Paul goes on to say, Ask God to bless everyone who mistreats you. Ask him to bless them and to not curse them. Too often we wish harm on those who hurt us. And God says to us through Paul, That's not my way of community. My way is the way of forgiveness, to call people back and to include. We saw that through the life of Jesus, and then Paul shows us what community looks like. Paul went on to say, When others are happy, be happy with them. And when they're sad, be sad with them. Be friendly with everyone. Don't be proud and feel that you're smarter than others. Make friends with ordinary people. In other words, journey. Journey with each other. Share life. Share the highs. Share the lows. Share the journey. Not just the goal or the learnings at the end point, but share all of the journey. I love Luke's Gospel. And there's a story right at the end of Luke's Gospel where two disciples are gloomy and downcast. They're distraught that Jesus has died. And Jesus doesn't try to make things better. 
he simply draws near. He comes alongside them and journeys with them. They share scripture. They talk. They pray. They share food. And they don't realize that it's Jesus beside them. But all of a sudden, everything is all right. Not because Jesus has fixed anything, but simply because they have journeyed together through scripture, through prayer, through food. Paul, in his teaching, went on to say, Don't mistreat anyone who has mistreated you, but try to earn the respect of others, and do your best to live at peace with everyone. Dear friends, don't try to get even. Let God take revenge. In the scriptures, the Lord says, I am the one to take revenge and pay them back. The scriptures also say, if your enemies are hungry, give them something to eat. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. This will be the same as pouring hot burning coals on their heads. Don't let evil defeat you, but defeat evil with love. And this has to be the key to our faith, doesn't it? That love drives out evil, not diligence, not searching around, not judging, but love. Love. Community. Spending time together. Or what the Greek version of the Bible calls it, koinonia. Fellowship. It's critically important to us. It's where we model what the Christian life looks like and where we have that life modelled to us. And that's why we must journey with as much of our life as we can so that we can share all of that. When we share, then we're truly modelling the common good. Then we're truly modelling love. The Christian community, Christian fellowship, that's where we find others to journey with because Jesus shows us how important that journey is. Let us pray. Jesus, you journeyed with your disciples. You guided them into your ways. We thank you for Paul, whose teaching continues to guide us today. May we always be sensitive to your Spirit's work in us, drawing us closer to you, to your ways, and into a full version of community. Amen. Here are some questions to reflect on. What does the faith community that you're part of look like now? What does your faith community that you're part of look like now? What do you do together with others? Maybe you're not involved in journeying with others. If you're not already involved in journeying with other Christians, are you interested in that? If you are, I'd encourage you to check out your local Christian church. How about you push pause now and spend some time jotting down the ways that either you are involved or that you would like to be involved, either in the Christian community or the wider community as a representative of Jesus. Is there something that the Holy Spirit might be prompting within you? Push pause now. So I hope you are sensitive then to the Holy Spirit at work in you, to the Holy Spirit's prompting about what it is you're being called into.
As we close, go from this place encouraged to act graciously and to love abundantly. Go to act lovingly, openly, honestly and humbly in the way of Jesus. And go with the blessing of God, creator, redeemer and giver of life. Amen. Look forward to seeing you next week. See you then. Bye.